best third down opportunity that, uh, well, it's a first down. I see they're moving the chains. It looks like they're moving it, but I was going to say, it was going to bring up third and very short. First time that Northwestern's had that opportunity all night, and it was from two running plays. Timmons now the quarterback again. On the quick pass, it's caught, and it's a touchdown to Gary Harrell. 12 yards on the touchdown. And Northwestern climbs out of the hole a little bit. So it's Gary, now 28-15. Gary Harrell simply ran a quick slant over the middle. Two-step drop, three-step drop by the quarterback, and he hit him right on the numbers. And Gary Harrell having a big night here. The fine split in for Northwestern. Only 5'7 and 140 pounds, but he's a good one. As we see an injured Northwestern player, big number 72 down there for Northwestern, Joseph Graham, the center. Three plays, 21 yards, a minute and 15 seconds on the drive, aided by the personal foul penalty against Miami Beach. And Harrell now over 100 yards and a touchdown. He's MVP. Uh, that, he gets my vote. So Harrell and Cooper are our MVPs, and this game still got... 441 in the third quarter and the whole fourth quarter to go. We're the only guys that can vote yeah. for MVP. We, so, if we were judges in Miss America, we so would have voted after the uh, bathing suit. After the talent or bathing suit. Or it ain't over till it's over. Here we go. Okay. Nice catch by Harold. Gets inside position on the receiver before the free safety can get there. Perfect timing. Nice throw. Nice catch. Puts Northwestern on the board. They're behind 28-14. Okay, Bill. We'll, we'll do this. If something happens to change my mind, we'll give out two MVP awards. We'll put Furman on the spot. I'll give him Bob Kaufman's shirt. He's got on a red shirt that says 17. Channel 17 right here. I, I'm loyal. There's Gary Harrell. Stats, five receptions, 108 yards, and a touchdown. And a fine performance like that is overshadowed by Cooper's great performance. Nick Valmani, are we really going to have a baseball score? Are you going to cross this up with football after the PAT? <laughs> well, I got some baseball coming for you right here after we watch this extra point. Okay. They're going to go for two again. Tim is the quarterback. Same play. And this time the ball is dropped, so the pass fails. All right, let's hear baseball, Nick. All right, the American League is the final Kansas City over Seattle, 9 to 2, and the Baltimore comeback is on. They're yes. on top of New York, 5 to 4, yes. top of the seventh. Yes. Toronto, Milwaukee tied at 1 in the second. Oakland on top of Minnesota, 5 to 1 in the fifth. In the National League, as we know, the Cubs are, don't know, the Cubs won this afternoon, 4 to 2 over the Pirates. Atlanta in that big game beating Cincinnati, 5 to 1. The Mets in Montreal tied at 2 in the seventh, and no score in the fourth between St. Louis and Philadelphia. And now for the weather, here's Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Partly that was good, cloudy Nick. with lightning in the area. Yes. Temperature 86 degrees, humidity 80%. And Kaufman and Pollock have sneakers on, and the big lineman is wearing the regular shoes. Uh, there's been disaster for Northwestern the last two plays. They lost their center, Joseph Graham, 6'2", 195, on the previous play on the touchdown. And on the extra point, they lost the starting left guard, who's 5'10", 230, Michael Ross. And he's still being worked on, so they've lost two of their interior linemen in two plays. What Nick didn't tell you all is that Nick and I have box seats for Game 7 of the World Series at Wrigley Field, Cubs and Orioles. How's that for confidence? Has that thing already been played and we're just getting a video delay? Yes. <laughs> we'll be on hand. We're going to do live sports updates from the box seats. We'll miss you, Tammy Ammy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because you're a tropical. <laughs> Yeah, that's about, to me, that's about the only way I can enjoy a baseball game is in person. Really. I mean, TV, I don't know what it is. I can watch football, basketball on TV. Watching baseball on TV, you know, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> it's just boring. I'm glad Nick is hearing this. I love the game, but I like seeing it in person. You're watching WLRN TV Channel 17, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. We are live here at Memorial Stadium on Miami Beach. It's Northwestern in Miami Beach. The score, 28 to 14, Beach over the Bulls. Northwestern, do we see the onside kick? We'll find out in just a second as Marvin Jones approaches. That's no onside kick. That's deep. That's Cooper on the return. And Cooper all the way out to about the 30, looks like 33 yard line. And a flag goes down. Cooper, by the way, has a touchdown on a kickoff return this year for 80 yards. So he can do it all. Beach is going to have their backs up to the wall again after this. Another crucial mistake on a punt or a kickoff. 
Cooper started the 1989 football season from Miami Beach against NMB on the opening kickoff, 80 yards for a touchdown. And that's a way to start the year off. Well, this isn't the way to start this off after this Northwestern touchdown. You see Miami Beach going back to the huddle. They're depressed about the penalty. They should be. Those are dumb, stupid mistakes. There's no reason to make them. I know it's got upset Jim Crow. And it's all happened here basically in the second half. And every time they've done it, you know, mistakes. And mistakes have gotten, uh, have led to 28 points by Miami Beach and 14 by Northwestern. So the game's getting a little sloppy. Got four minutes, 20 seconds and counting here in the third quarter. A whole other quarter of action headed your way. And then following that, it's Gators football here on Channel 17. And I never thought I would be promoing Gators football. <laughs> There's Cooper stats, 18 and a half yards to carry. What a spin move. Didn't get too much out of it, but Bill showed some class and some, some uh, Division I play there. He did. He showed some quickness, but the thing I wanted to comment on, Rick, was the fact that for the first time, the Northwestern defense shut down the counter play. They closed everything to the inside. They forced that play to bounce to the outside, which from a defensive standpoint, that's where you want it to go because your secondary is sitting there. Nobody's assigned to block them. They closed it down and forced Cooper to the outside, and Northwestern stopped it. First time they've done that tonight. That looked good for Northwestern's defense. Got an official timeout. Another Northwestern player goes down. Looks like an ankle or maybe even a cramp. Last play, Derek Lee and Keno Taylor in on the tackle. And as Bill mentioned, that's the first time tonight Cooper's really been shut down, and that play, the counter play, has been shut down. Jim Crow does not look like a man who's up by two touchdowns. And he's talking to a man who's a legend down here, who's one of the Chuck. nicest people ever involved in high school athletics, Chuck Fieldson, respected all over the state, all over the country. And this man's retired, and he's still helping in football and basketball at Beach High. He was their AD and basketball coach for years, and they don't come any better. There he is to the left of uh, the coach on your screen with the headsets on. Chuck Fieldson. I believe he was the basketball coach when I was in high school. Rick, we used to play Miami Beach. He's and that was the lightning. Yeah, great picture of the lightning in the background there, and I'm glad I have my sneakers. I'm uh, grounded. <laughs> I tell you, Bill, if they don't come up with another big play, which is what's given them all their points tonight, you know, the momentum's going to switch. It looked like a lock a little while ago, 28 to 7 or 28 to 8, whatever it was, but this is no longer a lock. Because if they don't move the ball this time, Northwestern goes ahead and scores, we got a ball game. So back in the back in the football game, you're right, Bob. So fans can see why Jim Crow was upset, even though he had a 28-8 lead. That is uh, Keno Taylor. It it's looks like there. he's injured his right ankle or knee, and he's being assisted off. Let's hope it's not serious. Now that looks like uh, Greek to me, literally. Uh, no, it's a, it's the it's that uh, power eye they run. He calls it the, the uh, he calls it the triangle eye, and that's I'm sure that they were drawn there. And that's the formation that we right. see right now. Instead of the power eye, they call it the triangle mm -hmm. eye. Paul, the quarterback. Cooper is the tailback, and he's got Smith and Lewis in front of him. It's Cooper, and Cooper is buried under a sea of blue and gold. And getting up off the pile, 88 Ivy Kearson, along with Charles McDonald, number 69. Well, they tried to play power football then, Rick, and they uh, they got squashed. They got whipped right there at the point of attack as Northwestern's defense rose up and stopped them. I'd like to see them come back and try to run the option play. I thought that was successful for them earlier. Northwestern is taking away the inside. Let's go to the outside. Let's run the option, see if they can defend both things. Tony Sassone, the only wide out. He's at the bottom of the screen, just out of camera range. They send Lewis in motion, so they have the eye left. They fake to Cooper, haul on the pass, he pumps, he fires. Got him open. And it's oh, oh, unbelievable. Wow. Awesome. Great play. Oh. Lewis on the catch. Sent Satan and Lewis, 5'8", 150 junior, on the ground, makes the catch. Bill, the fake by the quarterback and the running back made that play. It froze two defensive well, linemen who could have decked The play's designed to do that, Bob. They ran a counter bootleg where they faked really to both backs get misdirection one way come back and the quarterback short so it gets Hall out on the corner where he can see over those big linemen and he comes up with the big play the man laying down on the ground makes a big big catch here for Miami Beach number 69 for Miami Beach Mark Romello appears to have an injured hand and the officials have called the timeout 21 yard pass play from James Hall to Satan and Lewis and 
Bob, you talked about making a big play, and they just did. They really did needed that because it was a third down, and you're going to see it here. I mean, the pass was right on the money with a guy on the ground. We see the counter bootleg right. action. It gets the linebackers going one way. It allows Santana Lewis to come underneath it, and uh, he's wide open. They've been leading a charmed life all, uh, all night, Bill, because when they needed a big play to stop momentum from going to Northwestern, they've gotten it. I thought it was a smart call by Jim Crow. The quarterback's not that big. It, it allowed him to get out on the corner where he could see, get away from the big lineman. Ball at the 48, first and 10 for the high tides, their own 48. 2.17 to go, third quarter. Right up the middle, Terry Smith, nothing. McDonald, along with 84, Derek Lee on the tackle. Well, my, uh, Miami Northwestern is determined to take away the inside running game, and they've been able to do that, and Beach has come back with the pass and the big play, like you said, Bob, but I think uh, uh, Beach has got to try to get outside a little bit, loosen them up some. What I meant by the uh, the luck on that was not the call, but the kid having to be on the ground. Had he kept running, that ball would have been on the ground. He never would have caught it because it had been behind him. Pro set the split backs now as Hall the pass shakes off one tackler could not get away from McDonald who makes the initial hit and knocks him to the ground helped down on the play by number 85 Andre Porter Bill that time they went away from their game plan of motion they went to a straight uh, you know veer attack type of thing with a split end no motion and uh, they were all over the quarterback they were I, I don't know if the motion had anything to do with the pass rush it looks like Beach's people are getting a little tired up front in the offensive line and Northwestern just blew right past them Bob and was all over uh, James Hall before he could do anything at the end of the third quarter we're going to go down to Nick Belmonte he'll have scores from other games around Dade County Backs are in the I formation, the straight I this time. Joseph and Cooper. Oh, and geez. Cooper gets Mar pasted by Marvin <laughs> Jones. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that time Marvin blitzed from his middle linebacker position. Cooper's hurt. And he really laid it to Cooper. He's really laid it to the young man. Well, we see he's in a little bit of pain there. We hope he's okay. But Marvin Jones, a 6'2", 225-pound all-world linebacker for Northwestern, really got in the backfield with some penetration and destroyed that play and uh, put a lick on Charles Cooper. Cooper's going to get up. We're going to see a 51 and blossed right across the front instead of that number two. He got nailed. Well, they had Miami Beach in a position they don't want to be in, third and 13. They were going to have to run a draw. They were going to have to uh, throw the ball. So Northwestern just laid their ears back and blitzed everybody and uh, came up. Uh, Marvin Jones came up with a big play. But, go ahead, Rick. I was going to say, interesting stat there, 185 yards, but think about it, he had 176 in the first half. So they've held him in check here in the second half. They've taken away that trap play we were talking about, the counter, they've shut it down. That was the bread and butter play that Cooper was running in the first half. And they forced uh, Northwestern into two third down plays. The first one, they were successful on the counter bootleg with a great catch. Uh, by number 40 for Miami Beach. The second one, as we saw right here, they didn't have a chance as Northwestern blitzed. <laughs> they got their fingers crossed. It. They're hoping Cooper gets up okay. Mm. Well, a reminder about some of the upcoming events headed your way here on Primetime Sports. Sunset Volleyball Tournament in the middle of October, and then at the end of October, it's the FIU Gatorade Soccer Tournament. We'll have the Wisconsin FIU Soccer Match live right here on Channel 17. Bill can't wait to do it. I'm gonna have Bill do sideline work on that game. Could be far sideline. Referees call the timeout as Needleman goes into punt formation. Boy, this is so much better than that drink you had last week, Rick. That's because the word Gator wasn't on it. <laughs> Here can they come against Needleman, and he just got it off. It's a nice high spiral. And it backs Harrell all the way up to the 20-yard line. And a great hit. And a flag goes down as Harrell goes down. Perhaps maybe a face mask on the 40-yard punt. That's the only thing it could be is Miami Beach had great coverage with their special teams in and uh, prevented a run back. But it, they might have inadvertently grabbed the face mask. And the result's going to be a penalty if they did. Tell you what, we're uh, going to go to Nick Belmonte. And uh, no, it's going to be against Northwestern. We've got 15 seconds to go here before the end of the third quarter. Uh, Nick, we've got some scores. 
Yeah, we got some finals around the county. A tropical Killian hung on and won 19 to 7. Over day North there in the fourth quarter, Edison on top of North Miami Beach 21-6. Homestead did hold off South Dade 19 to 14. And American won 10 nothing over Miami Springs and South Miami seven, Southwest nothing. That's the final from Tamiami. Well, the uh, Purple Pride won't go undefeated this year. How come everybody's done and we're not even in the fourth quarter yet? Because we've got a 28 to 14 game and we're down to the last three seconds of the quarter and it is now the end of the quarter. Northwestern was called for holding on that penalty. So we have now made it through three quarters and the score is Northwestern on the downside to Miami Beach, 28 to 14. And with 12 minutes to go, Northwestern, Bill, still has a shot at it. They're only two oh, touchdowns They're very down. much in the football game, the way they've played, and the, the momentum swung back and forth. They're, uh, they're playing defense. They finally shut down Beach's running game. And as soon as they could do that, we knew it was going to be a close football game if that happened. Offensively, they've thrown the ball. They're going to continue to do that. And uh, they just got to improve their running game a little bit. It'll open up the passing even more. I see where Big Joseph Graham, number 72, the 6'2", uh, 200-pound center for the Bulls, who was injured, is back in the football game. So uh, they will at least get a decent snap. With, you know, they won't have a, a backup center in there. Did I hear that the mayor was here? <laughs> I was going to say they have a special election here on the beach or something. <laughs> he needs votes. Alex Dowd, I believe he's a beach high grad. Patrolling the sidelines, bodyguard in tow. Now the uh, delay right now is uh, as they move to one side of the field and the other, they got to get the chains down there. The chains didn't catch up with the teams. It's not Lee Atwater next to him, is it? <laughs> <laughs> As we begin the fourth quarter of play, Northwestern finds themselves down two touchdowns, and they're also, uh, as they did in the last series, uh, switching quarterbacks. Silas Timmons will be the quarterback. Gary Harrell comes out as a wide receiver to the near side. Timmons threw the touchdown pass to Harrell in the last Northwestern drive. Of course, that was aided by a big personal foul penalty against Miami Beach. And Timmons to pass, gets hit as he throws, and he throws it to someone on the sidelines. Nobody in the, the yellow jersey, anyhow, near it. Spivey was closest to it, and that would have been six the other way. Well, that time, number 10, Jackson Marset, a linebacker for Miami Beach Blitz, a 5'11", 190-pound senior, blitzed through from his linebacker position and uh, was on the quarterback and disrupted his throw. So it brings up a second, uh, second, third and long here for Northwestern, something they don't want to be in. You know, there's something wrong here. They were first and 10 on the 15, and the play ended with a four-yard gain to the 19. And now it's third and 10 back on the original line of scrimmage. That's interesting. Is that uh, metric math? I don't know. Timmons to pass, fires it for Harold, and Harold catches it, but he will be short of the first down at about the 21-yard line. He needed to get to the 24. Yeah, well, you, you know, you got to run your pass patterns for the distance that you need for the first down. It doesn't really do you any good to, to run a curl when you need 10 and run an 8-yard curl. So you know you're going to come back for the ball, go 13 and come back 2, and you'll have 11, and you'll get the first down. But the ball was thrown well by the quarterback. Rick, something we haven't talked about tonight, Miami Beach High's pants, brand new, got them from Tony George. They're, they are really sharp looking. They got the, the glossy silver, and they instead of a stripe up the side, they kept it plain, and they got uh, beach and uh, circled by a, a football-shaped object. Really sharp looking if we ever get a close-up of it. We're going to go down to Nick right after the punt by Marvin Jones. And Jones sends it straight up in the air. He'll get some yardage out of it, but not much unless he gets the bounce, and he does. And it'll go down at about the 43-yard line. Nick, what's the story on Charles Cooper? Well, it's nothing serious, Rick. They're just precautionary measures. They taped his left knee. He had an injury a year and a half ago, but this really wasn't going to be a factor, they said. But just in case, they taped it to pull a little more reinforcement on. He's ready to go. He'll be in there this series. And how about the Orioles and Yankees? <laughs> nothing yet, Rick. <laughs> now, watching Marvin Jones punt there, it, it's not no form to it. It's brute force. That just shows how strong he is. He just bangs it with his leg. The ball hadn't exploded yet. But well, it's just brute force. He brute forced that one 34 yards. There's that triangle eye that Bob was telling us about. 
This is uh, Joseph on the carry. <laughs> Look who's got him. <laughs> Marvin Jones right there on the tackle. Well, Beach is trying to play what's called smash ball right now. They're lining up in that triangle eye and they're trying to run off tackle with their big offensive line and create something. And uh, I'm anxious to see how this is going to turn out because they were successful with misdirection in the first half. Now they're trying to go with brute force in the running game. Can you picture Marvin Jones in an orange jersey with white numbers? Yes, very much so. A green somewhere and a U on the helmet. Same play to the other side, Rick, off the left side of the line, and uh, it's going to bring up third and short. This ought to be about a third and two, and again, Joseph on the carry, coming in with a play from the sidelines, number 80 is Sassone. Well, let's see if Northwestern blitzes all their people now and uh, comes after Miami Beach. They got them in a third and two situation, and let's see if they really lay their ears back and come. This is a big down here for Northwestern. If they can force Beach to putt, uh, get the ball back you know they've got nine minutes and 21 seconds but they don't want Beach to get some first downs and, and they'll lose all their field position if they can stop them here they'll have it Patrick Joseph again the tailback in the formation they go to Smith Smith's got a hole and Terry Smith across the 30 to about the 29 yard line and Bill that's exactly what Northwestern didn't want to have happen. well what happened Northwestern didn't blitz but they did the next best thing they had a seven man line they took their linebackers and put them up on the line of scrimmage they took away that second layer of their defense it allowed uh, the ball carrier to squeeze right through into the secondary and the results a big big that might be Miami Beach's biggest play here in the second half because it keeps the clock moving gives them good field position 19 yards on a carry after this play we'll take a look at the third quarter statistics triangle eye behind James Hall and we get movement <laughs> more than movement we get a lot of movement five yards against Miami Beach wish we had a replay bill of that previous play I don't know if the quarterback expected the fullback to take the ball then here's the stats Miami Beach 272 yards in total offense as opposed to 186 Hall two of five and none bigger than that 30-yard touchdown to Reagan. And another big stat there, Beach with no turnovers in the game. Northwestern with three. Joseph again on the carry. Patrick oh. Joseph, where did oh. this guy go? Cooper, Cooper's got to run for his money there. We knew he was a great blocker, but what he did in the first half, and now he's getting the opportunity, Patrick Joseph, the 189, 80 pound senior to show that he can also run with the ball. All right, we're going to take a look at that run again. That wasn't Joseph. That was number uh, that 40. That was the previous play. No, that was the previous play. Terry Smith, a 211 pound uh, junior fullback knifing up the middle for big yardage. So it'll be second and about four. Terry Smith on the carry. Well, Beach is running nothing but power football. Uh, Northwestern had stopped it earlier. Miami Beach has got their second win. Their offensive line in this series here has come off the ball real well and have has taken control of the line of scrimmage and they're knocking the Bulls off the ball. Another first down, 7.20 to go. Fourth quarter, 28-14, Miami Beach. We get a timeout. Well, they're taking time off the clock. If they get any points, whether it's three or seven right now, this is a lock with the amount of time they're taking off the clock. Is that Melissa? Not yet. Not yet. Could be Julie, but she's a blonde. <laughs> I'll have to bring Melissa next week. Into the bowl. Then she got to see a game in the bowl soon. That's right. Joseph is a hard-nosed kid. Well, that time, the right side of the Miami Beach line, number 58, Tim Sullivan, 6 feet, 215 pounds. Number 79, Hugo Rodriguez, a tackle, 6 feet, 225. Opened a big hole there and allowed Terry Smith to pick up good yardage. So that Miami Beach offensive line reestablishing itself here in the fourth quarter, <laughs> taking control of the line of scrimmage. Five carries, 29 yards for Mr. Cooper. And it's the second and five. We get another timeout. And what they're doing is sending off Anton Jackson, who had a helmet problem because they stopped it for him last time. 
See where, where Mark Romello, number 69, has come in the game and replaced Hugo Rodriguez at right tackle. So that's Mark Romello playing right offensive tackle for Miami Beach. Second and five, handoff to Smith. Smith gets a couple of tough yards, and that's about it. Coming up next week here on Primetime Sports, it'll be Edison in Miami High from the Orange Bowl. But Bob Coffin will be doing the public address announcing, and Bill Trout and I will be handling the commentary as Nick Belmonte out on a talent search looking for future Salt Lake City Trappers. You guys will make some tackles. Coach Fieldson made two tackles last night at Tropical Park. So did Joe Martinez, <laughs> who incidentally is on the WLRN uh, board of directors. Hall hands off to Cooper. Cooper got tripped up and still manages to get a couple of yards out of it. Well, again, my uh, Northwestern came with a seven-man line as big Marvin Jones, one of the linebackers, jumped up into the line of scrimmage, and uh, it wasn't quite good enough as Beach... I think it's fourth and one now as right. uh, Joseph on that carry. Rick, this play, so this drive has gone 10 plays as of this time, and it has eaten up four minutes and 50 seconds. Well, that's exactly what Miami Beach wanted. Beach elected to pick up the first down as opposed to the field goal here. Ball control, that's the name of this drive. Cooper again gets the first down. Did I say Cooper? I meant Patrick Joseph. I think that's two times in a row I've done that. Well, he's, he's got the tough yards in this drive. He's kept it alive, and Bill pointed out something. Surprised he didn't go for the field goal uh, because that, that would ice this ball game, and he's got the great kicker. But as Bill's pointed out, the offensive line for Beach has been doing such a great job. He might as well let him keep going. Well, that time they ran to the left behind Lemiski and Harry Torres, the, the right guard, and they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Smith, Lewis, and Patrick Joseph behind James Hall. And Patrick Joseph gets down to the one. Northwestern's defense is dead tired. We had two arm tackles were there where people didn't put their shoulder into the ball carrier. And uh, Joseph is a strong runner. You're not going to bring him down by sticking your arm out. So Patrick Joseph piling off right guard, right tackle there for Miami Beach as they're threatening to score. They've got the ball on what, Rick? The one yard line I can't see from my vantage point. You're looking at Jeff Barnes's back. That's why. Right. all night. So far, 11 plays on his drive for 55 yards, and they've eaten up over five minutes. Down to exactly four minutes to go in the football game. Joseph deserves to score. I agree. Now let's see if Jim Cole agrees with us. Nope. They give it a haul for the touchdown. So James Hall gets his first touchdown as a Miami Beach high tide quarterback. And that one pretty much puts this game out of reach for Northwestern. Well, that time Miami Beach had brought Ron Pelotero, their right guard, 5'11", 210 pound right guard in to get some fresh people in there. And he threw a key block along with uh, Pat Perulius, the center. And uh, the result was a big touchdown there that just about ices this game for Miami Beach. 12 plays, 56 yards. And Bob, this, this is the most amazing stat on the drive. Six minutes and one second in the drive. Very rare for a high school team to control it that long. I don't think they passed one time, did they? 12 plays all on the ground, I believe, Bob. Low snap, but Needleman manages to get it through the uprights, and it's 35 to 14. Miami Beach has really dominated in this football game. They did it in the first half on big plays, and they iced the game pretty much here on a great ball control drive, and here it is. The right side of that beach line, we just caught the back end of it, but uh, excellent job there. Simply knocked Northwestern off the ball back into the end zone. Beach High is going up high in the ratings next week. I don't know how high they're going to take them, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was top three, maybe four at the, lo at the lowest. In our poll or the Herald's poll or... Uh, well, whichever one gives more credence. I, in ours, I would presume they'd be in the top three. I know Sports they get my vote in the top three. Uh, Sports Illustrated will have them 11. <laughs> and the that. CNN poll will have them 25th. Well... Sports Illustrated, see, it's Miami Beach. If it was any other beach in the world, they'd be rated third. But it says Miami <laughs> Beach, put them 11th. 
I detect a little bitterness there, uh, Robert, in your voice. We see the beach cheerleaders <laughs> with plenty to cheer about here. Girls, give us a cheer. Your team's up 35 to 40. Here they go. They heard me. Here they <laughs> you go. did a good job there, bro. No bitterness toward these girls. A bitterness to a guy named Rick Riley. Hadn't left us alone since he was decked at the, <laughs> the Fiesta Bowl. Well, following the game, we'll make our official announcement of the Midway Sports Channel 17 MVPs. Unofficially, it's probably going to be Cooper and Harold. <laughs> How's that? You could take the UN off of that. Needleman's kick goes down to Howard. And he's going to try and go the other way. And he gets hemmed inside the 10. It's probably about the 8-yard line. A three-yard return, and we also get a flag on the play. It's going to be a clip, Rick, so they'll take it back to the one and a half. And it happened right in front of the official. There's a beach fan saying, we're number one. You're right, son. Tonight you are number one, 35 to 14. She's thinking, let's get out of here. There's a lot of places to see. <laughs> game <clears throat> this is over how are the skybox is doing people still fired up mm. well, it looks like they've all packed it in for the night they're watching us now they went inside to watch they saw the lightning off in the distance well northwestern gets a break on the 15 yard personal foul penalty against miami beach now here's where the beach defenders simply lay their ears back here we come they're going to put great pressure on the quarterback and uh Young quarterback for Northwestern under the gun here. Timmons, the quarterback again. And he fumbles the football. It'll be second down, and the clock now continuing to tick away down to three minutes and eight seconds to go in the football game. Boy, big old Andre Brewster just fell on top of everybody over there. 6'1", 300 pounds, <laughs> number 72 for Miami Beach. And you know, it's bad enough when you're losing the game, but when Andre falls on you, that's sort of the icing on the cake. Wide receiver to the near side, Rashidi Jones. As Silas Timmons, the quarterback, with time, going to air it out, caught by Harrell. And Harrell's going to go down at about the 29-yard line. I think we're going to get a personal foul, perhaps, on Northwestern for a late hit. Yes, on a late block, uh, really no harm, no foul there. They're, they weren't fighting at all, but uh, I'm surprised I, they threw the flag. I don't agree with that call. I mean, you know, the kid's a little frustrated. It wasn't a cheap shot. I agree with you, Bob. You know, this is not ballet. This is football. People are going to throw blows once in a while. we got to get used to it. Well, how about this? They called it against Beach. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they called it against Beach? They called it against Beach. They just marked 15 off against the team in red. Well, maybe, and all three of us saw 74 in, in yellow make the hit. Well, maybe what we didn't see was he got hit before. You know, we made a saw the tail end of that, right? This is true. Miami Beach has called the timeout now with 224. And this timeout may just be called to calm down everybody. Nick, what's happening? Well, that last play was a definite late hit by a Miami Beach defensive back. If you have a replay, it comes from the top of the screen. It was flagrant, and uh, everyone saw it. Uh, but uh, anyway, Jim Crow is going over, and he's uh, congratulating his player, shaking her hand. He knows this one's in the bag. Charles Cooper has had his uh, shoulder pads off for the last two minutes and a job well done. And uh, I looked at him. I said, Charles, do you have fun tonight? And he said, yes, sir, I did. <laughs> Told you, sir. No, I added that. <laughs> You're getting old, Nick. The one negative thing against Miami Beach in this game has been their penalty yardage. Ten penalties for 105 yards. That's the type of night it's been for the Miami uh, Northwestern Bulls as Gary Harrell, their fine splitter, has had an excellent football game. Uh, jumped offside, started his pattern a little bit early. It's going to cost Northwestern five yards and bring up a, a first and 15. For Northwestern, that is their seventh penalty for 50 yards. So we've seen 150 yards in penalties. That's still less than Cooper gained on the ground today, though. 2.34 on the clock. See if we can get Nick to get us one more baseball score before we go off the air. I'm not an Orioles fan much. <laughs> and the pass is caught by Bob Kaufman's point guard, Rashidi Jones. <laughs> Good job, Rashidi. 
Wash it. <laughs> this guy, the announcer is not going to be popular in the Jones family. <laughs> Mark the ball at the Miami Beach 49-yard line. You know, those passes are fine for statistics, but right. you're going to have to throw something besides out. You're down 35 to 14. you got to get the ball downfield and get it down there in a hurry. Timmons gets away from one, two, three, and can't get away from Jimmy Gatsis and uh, Jerry Robles. That was uh, Jackson Marset that really nailed him number 10 after he, he uh, the other two. And Marcel was the one that put his uh, ride down or whatever that headgear is right into the numbers. All three of those guys, Gotsis, Marcet, and Clinton, boy, they, they've been sticking people all night. They're very active linebackers. I'm impressed with Miami Beach's defense. They've been all over the field tonight. They're very, very quick, very aggressive. Chris Colson, wide receiver to the near side. That's my friend, the flea, at 5'3 and 125. Timmons steps out of bounds right in front of the first down marker. Jerry Harrell's nickname is the flea, but Chris Colson really should be called the flea. Or the gnat, one or the other. Rashidi Jones, wide receiver up at the top. Down at the bottom is Chris Colson. Timmons with a pump pass, and Colson missed it and almost had another interception for James Roberts. Nice try by Roberts. And we're down to a minute and 46 seconds. So on fourth and 10, more than likely, they'll be going for it. Chip wanted me to say hi to Melissa on that last shot, but she's probably been asleep for the last three hours. Don't bet on it. The women are having fun when you're out of the house. <laughs> Lots of room to run got for the Timmons. First. He's got the first. Does it look, whoa, oh, oh my goodness me. Very end of that play, David Francis cracked helmets with someone else on, on the Miami Beach team. Northwestern's gonna call the timeout with 125. Willie Goldsmith's gonna come out and design a play. Bill, this isn't uh, the most graceful scramble in the world. No, he, there's nothing there to, to throw, so he takes off running with the ball, trying to make something happen. And he pays for his decision as, uh, boy, they look like, uh, you know how you throw uh, bread in the water to Brim and Bass, and they start hitting it. That's what Beach's defense looked like right there. They were, they were going after the bread. I think Miami Beach welcomed this uh, timeout as much as Northwestern needed it because they're tired out there. Beach's defenders are tired, and now they're having to rush the passer. And uh, they're all on one knee. They're tired. They, they played well tonight. Still says 86 degrees. Luckily, we have a breeze up here. The kids on the field don't get uh, privy to that. Just a reminder, coming up next here, following primetime sports, it'll be Gators football. We've got another minute and 25 in this game. It's Northwestern on the downside of the score to Miami Beach, 35 to 14. Rick, can you tell everybody again what you told me? If you've got a satellite dish, it was SACCOM4 and transponder. Is that the word? That's the I word. I sound like an electrician. Transponder 14. <laughs> Is that what you said? Is that what you told me? All right. That's, that's to get the UM game tomorrow. <laughs> Probably pick up Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> Good line, Chipper. Go ahead, you can tell him. Chip is, is letting us know that really is, if you if you have the satellite dish, you pick up Rick's home video of Melissa being born and being nurtured and everything else. So it's, it's the home movies. Well, Beach had a fierce pass rush then, and uh, finally Chris Fucarazzo, the, uh, the fine middle guard who's come in the game to replace Neville, uh, dropped the quarterback for a loss. And Timmons got pasted as he got the ball off, but Roberts intercepts it. 
and that will about ice it with uh, 58 seconds left in this game. Roberts with his second interception of the game, the third for Miami Beach, and the high tides are going to win this one 35 to 14. And uh, Nick Belmonte, just kind of make my night. Tell me the Orioles won. I'd love to, Rick, but uh, repeated <laughs> calls to Frank Robinson's dugout have let him unanswered. Uh-oh, that's not good. Call Pete Rose. Yeah, Pete will know. <laughs> uh, this is certainly a big win for Jim Crowell in Miami Beach as they'll leave here tonight. They'll be, what, 3-0, 4-0? What's their record? Going to be 3-0. And, uh, and uh, certainly one of the better teams in Dade County. Right, and the score is going to open some eyes, uh, Bill, because Carroll City struggled against these guys. Got a new quarterback in for Miami Beach, number 12, Albert Guerra, the third string quarterback, just hands the ball off. And that should be the last play of this football game as we're down to 15 seconds and counting as the Miami Beach high tides, to steal a phrase from Alabama, roll over Northwestern 35 to 14. Storyline in the game, the big play for Miami Beach in the first half. Charles Cooper with an 80-yard touchdown run and a 70-yard touchdown run. And Mauricio Del Miedo with a block punt recovery for a touchdown following a Jimmy Gotts' blocked punt of Marvin Jones. And that got him three touchdowns in the first half. In the second half, it was another big play as Harold Reagan comes in for one offensive play, makes a circus catch for a touchdown, and that kind of put the thing out of reach. And then just to ice it all, they go on a six-minute ball control drive to ice it and make it 35 to 14. And the MVPs have stuck. We picked it a long time ago, even though Bill refused to concede. Gary um, Harrell and Charles Cooper, our Midway Sports Channel 17 MVPs. Again, that Miami Beach offensive line, excellent tonight as they've, as they've opened up the holes for Cooper and they established the running game, something we said at the top of the program that they had to do. They were able to do it. James Hall, a good job as the quarterback. Uh, what can you say about Cooper? And of course, Patrick Joseph came in, blocked and ran the ball on that key drive that got Beach going again in the fourth quarter. And now the clock is officially ticked down to triple zeros, and the final goes into the books. Northwestern loses to Miami Beach, and the high tides are undefeated. And the score is 35 to 14. Miami Beach now 3-0. Northwestern drops their record to 1-2. and two. Miami Beach has a week off, and that's good news for Jim Crow because not only does he get his quarterback, Dwayne Hickman, with another week to recover from strained ligaments, but he also knows he's got a great backup quarterback in James Hall to lead this team if Hickman can't go. Thirty-five to fourteen. We'll run down the scoring for you while we wait for Nick Belmonte to get Jim Crow. Miami Beach started it with 9.47 to go in the first quarter. Charles Cooper on a first and 10 from the 20 goes 80 yards for the touchdown. Gary Needleman made it 7-0. Beach makes it 14-0 with 2.50 to go in the first quarter. Jimmy Gotsis blocks the punt. Mauricio Delmeda falls on it for the touchdown. Needleman makes it 14-0. Northwestern gets on the board before halftime at 4.22. Williams on a one-yard dive and then throws one to Rashidi Jones on a two-point conversion. It's 14-8. It's 21 to eight with 225 to go before halftime. Cooper breaks free and goes 70 yards and makes a great stop and turn for the last five yards. Needleman's extra point makes it 21 to eight at the half. Third quarter, 28 to eight. Reagan on the 30 yard touchdown pass from Hall. Harrell gets a pass from Timmons to get Northwestern to within two, but then Hall on a one yard touchdown run and that iced it. Nick Belmonte's got a very happy Jim Crow. Let's go down to the field. Well, Coach, as you look at the final score, it looks like a runaway, but it really wasn't that. But the team came back in the second half. They didn't let down in the third quarter. I think for a second there, they, they, they tried to. We made some mistakes on the one punt. We have two guys injured, and we didn't get personnel in the game. It take two uh, take a timeout. And then we made a mistake on the, on the ensuing pump, but that's neither here nor there. They came back, put two up on the board in the second half. Big victory. This is a good ball club. The last Western's a good ball club. The last drive with Joseph doing a bulk of the running work. Here's a guy that goes on Harold that does a good job here closing well, the door. We need him to do that. See, we need he's got to come in and run 10, 15 snaps the ball game. Cooper is great for his size, for speed, but he and he can't run power in there constantly. We need to have the both 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 ends of that. And we've got him running fullback and tailback, and he really came through tonight. With a week, he went the wrong way and a touchdown. <laughs> his way to get it. <laughs> 
But they were calling up there. They said he should get it. Well, then that was his play. Well, there but you the go, guys. The quarterback turned. He wasn't there, so the quarterback took it in the end zone. It's the only thing he could do. He could have had it, but he went the wrong way. You, you got a week off now. You got a great start, 3-0. and oh. Last year, you were 5-5. Five and five. The difference between last year and this year, other than the record? Well, I'll tell you, the funny thing about it is we were 3-0 and oh last year, too. So the difference, I hope, is not going to be 5-5. Five and five. <laughs> to answer your question, I hope we finish the latter part of the season a lot stronger than we did when we were 3-0 and oh a year ago. And, <laughs> and your lastly, the quarterback situation. Hall does a great job tonight. Another extra week for uh, uh, Dobie, uh, Dwayne uh, Hickman yeah. Gillis uh, <laughs> to get ready. ready to go against Sunset. He'll definitely be ready. The doctor says no problem. In fact, he could have he could have done a little running this week, but we kept him completely out. So I'm real, I'm real pleased we did the right thing with him. Coach, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Jim Crow with a big win over Northwestern, 35 to 14. Back to you, Rick. Okay, Nick. Just tell me the Orioles won before we get done. I'm not going to give up on it. All right, let's take a look at our Midway Sports Channel 17 Most Valuable Players and two guys that are well-deserving of it. Gary the Flea Harrow for Northwestern, six receptions, over 100 yards and a touchdown. Charles Cooper, 180 yards plus and a pair of long touchdown runs. And they are the recipients of the Midway Sports Channel 17 Most Valuable Players. I understand we may have some unofficial final uh, statistics in our game as well. And uh, they're going to be pretty telling as well as the Miami Beach High Ties win it 35 to 14 over the Northwestern Bulls. And uh, for Northwestern, if there's any solace out of this game, perhaps they found a quarterback that can throw the football in uh, Silas Timmons as he got in a, a couple of touchdown passes, uh, one of them to Gary Harrell. And now we will take a look at those uh, final stats. These, of course, are unofficial, as kept by Mr. Stats, Reggie Harden. Northwestern uh, got more first downs than Miami Beach, but Beach made their first downs count. 283 yards on the ground, 50 more in the air, as James Hall goes two for five and throws a touchdown pass to Harold Reagan. The one negative statistic for Miami Beach is 105 yards in penalties. Well, Bill Trout, Bob Coffin, let's take a look at some second-half highlights. And, Bill, the first one, uh, James Spivey gets uh, an interception here. He is this one where the quarterback was hit as he released the ball. He rolled out to his right. And Spivey, number 15, I believe. Right, you, you'll see the quarterback's chase from the pocket. He gets hit right there. The ball's thrown short. Spivey jumps in front of it. Big play here for Miami Beach early in the second half. And this play right there leads to our next highlight, and this is the circus catch by Reagan. Reagan's one offensive play all night. He comes in, it's split in. Catches a post, nobody inside to help the corner. The result's a big, a big play there for Miami Beach and a touchdown. And this play is a, a nice catch on the other side by our MVP, Harrell. Harrell, perfectly thrown ball. Harrell makes a nice catch looking over the shoulder. Had a big night for, for the Bulls. And here's Harrell's touchdown play. He runs a quick slant, gets inside position on the corner. No help from the linebacker or the safety. Touchdown again, a big play by Harrell. And uh, final highlight uh, one of the most unheralded guys on the field is uh, Terry Smith Terry Smith the big fullback all night uh, has a big run right up the middle 19 yards and uh, he deserved to be he been banging away all night at that Bulls defense and had come up short till that play okay we're gonna give Nick one final shot that the Orioles win well I give Right. A single glass of water has as much soluble fiber as two bowls of oatmeal. A single glass of water with a spoonful of Metamucil. Metamucil, the natural fiber for regularity. Surprised? Don't be. Your doctor knows, ounce for ounce, Metamucil has five times more soluble fiber than oat bran. Today's high-fiber diet includes the right foods and Metamucil every day. 
Every day, more and more people are discovering what Metamucil is really all about. Natural soluble fiber Metamucil. It can make a daily difference in your health. Mommy! Why is this child <laughs> suffering miserably with a cold tonight? Why? When there's children's NyQuil. The no alcohol, no aspirin, nighttime sniffling, sneezing, stuffy head coughing so your child can rest medicine. Zach, the mama's in the kitchen. Oh, good. Uh, give her these, would you? Well, she'll be right out. Oh, uh, look, I, I have to go. No, where? Oh, uh, I just got one quick stop at the office, and then I'll be right back. Okay, dinner be ready in about an hour. I'll be back in about 20 minutes. All right, I'll see you later. Uh, oh, uh, did you get a chance to think about what we talked about? Yes. And? We'll talk later. Well, you can tell me if you said <laughs> yes or no. Later. Go. Get out of here. Hurry back. Okay. <laughs> I've got to get off my feet this minute. Hmm? Where's Zach? I heard his voice. Oh, he just stopped by on his way to the office. He'll be back in plenty of time. Hmm. You okay, honey? Fine. Is there anything else to do in the kitchen? Nothing until it's time to serve. Do you think Reuben will be coming? I don't know, Mama. He'll probably be seeing Tess. Well, he could have brought her. Well, I'm sure he would have, but um, well, she's got a lot of friends at the hospital. That's not it, and you know it, Veronica. He's ashamed of this house. What? Isn't he? No. You don't need to lie to protect him or me. Mama, Reuben is just Reuben. You can't change him. I know I was hard on all you kids, but I was trying to prepare you for life. I know, Mama. I know. Come, sit down here with me. Come. You're looking over my shoulder all day when I talk. What are you thinking? I have to talk to you about Zach, Mama. And you're not gonna like it. Are you asking me on a date? Well, what's so strange about that? Now, why would we want to spend Thanksgiving together? Hmm. I'll make you laugh. <laughs> what do I have to do for you? Well, you could start by... Oh, you know that sexy green dress you wore the other night? The one that's cut down Since to Since when do you notice what I wear? I always notice what you wear. Oh, boy, Hold no. it, hold it, hold it, hold it. No, wait a second. What? You don't even know where I'm going to take you. It doesn't matter where you're going to take me, because all I'll hear about is Amanda all night long. No, no, listen. I won't bring your name up at all. And I won't even talk what? about myself. Oh, that'll be the day. Come on. We'll have dinner. We can have a little dance. Oh, my. We can laugh. Oh, no, who wants to be alone on Thanksgiving? Well, why weren't you invited to the Corys? Didn't you get invited last year? Well, yes, but when you fall in love with the daughter, the boss's married daughter, you don't exactly get invited to all the parties, you know what I mean? Yeah. So would you go put that green dress No. On? Evan, I have other plans, but thank you for the offer. Okay. Will you call me if you change your mind? Okay. I'll be at the office. The office? You'll be at the office? That sounds like a hell of a place to spend Thanksgiving. Well, what about you? Stepping out on the town all by your little lonesome? I intend to enjoy Thanksgiving. My way. My way. Uh -huh. I'll see you. how you feel, Olivia. I don't. I don't know anything about the woman, Alice. You've read Russ's letter, and Alice has met her. Veronique is a very important person in Potico. She's a friend of Prince Rene. But that doesn't tell me anything about what she's like as a person. Russ has asked her to marry him. Now, that's enough of a character reference for me. It just happened too fast. Oh, well, when it's right, it's right. C'est la vie. <laughs> Olivia, try to understand. Now, your father needs someone to help him. 
I looked after him. I helped him. Yes, I know he can count on you and he loves you. Well, of course he loves her. He adores her. But there's a loneliness in parent that a child can't take away. They can help, but they can't take it away. I know about that. Of course you do. They both do. Now, in a little while, you're going to be grown up enough to fall in love for yourself. Then you're going to understand. You're being ridiculous. You were supposed to sit for me, remember that? But you couldn't. I know Olivia that. Olivia offered to do it, to do. and I'm glad she did, because she's perfect for it. Things are starting to make sense now. Things that she's done. Like what? She seems to be studying me. Amanda, you know how young girls are. Yes, I know. That's just what worries me. Well, I figured you, with your relationship with Evan, you'd understand this. What do you mean by that? People can get infatuated, but if you're happy, and you love somebody else, and you let them know that, eventually they'll get the idea, if, and only if, you want them to. Mom, would you tell Josie she's going to eat more than just turkey without Matthew, any gravy? Oh, I think that's up to your grandma. She's putting the plates together. Don't you look lovely? Thank Try it or anyone? Oh, yes. Hi. She will have some. It's not going to ruin your chances for the Fresh Faces contest. Have a little cider. <laughs> happy, happy Thanksgiving, Josie. Thanks, Kat. Now, what's this I hear about the Fresh Faces campaign? Oh, they're making the announcement tonight. I'm getting a little nervous. Of course you are. You know, we're going to have to leave a little early for the press conference. Press, press conference. conference? It is exciting, isn't it? Of course it is. And I want to win. I mean, I'd do anything in the world to do it. Uh, wouldn't you, Olivia? This honeymoon. John, there ain't no words. There ain't no words for it, is it? Hmm? Do you even remember the wedding? <laughs> I remember I was happy. I was so excited. No, it's all a blur to me. Except for seeing you walk down the aisle. Now, wait, was I graceful at least? Hmm, you did trip. I did not trip. Yeah. I did not trip. Now, come on, I made it down the aisle, okay? Didn't yes, I? you did, perfectly. Okay. And I remember I made it through the vows. I remember that very clearly. And mm -hmm. I remember the look in your eyes. Love. You know why there was love in my eyes? Because I was thinking, this lady is mine. She belongs to me, and she wants to share her life with me. Did you see my girl? Josie. Did you see her? Did she look beautiful? Just, you know what occurred to me? Hmm. It occurred to me that you're entirely too young to have a daughter that oh, looks like Oh, well, that. finally someone noticed. <laughs> <laughs> She looked out for me, didn't she? I'll be. I just wish that. What? What? Are you worried about her? Well, I can't help it. Don't worry. You got no. She's going to be very, very well taken care of. But today she's having Thanksgiving dinner with the Corys. She'll be with Matthew. She's going to have a great day. Not that, John. Then what is it? It's. It's. The fact that they're announcing this fresh faces thing today. Charlene, whatever the outcome, Josie can handle it. Daddy, I don't want another cavity. Sweetheart, it's time for act. Act. Anti-cavity fluoride rinse can cut cavities 40% more than brushing alone. Act now to reduce cavities 40%. Your little girl is growing up. Her needs are changing every day. From clothes... Mom! ...to medicine. She's just the right age for Junior Strength Tylenol. Too easy to swallow caplets to the work of four chewables. When they outgrow chewables, Junior Strength Tylenol. Mom. Sleeping Beauty slept for 100 years. Creaming a new diaper that stops leaks with a pair. Rise and shine, a prince is here. Bearing Kleenex Huggy Super Trim Diapers with new leakage control shields. These soft barriers help block leaks and funnel wetness into Huggy's blue inner layer. This unique design helps stop leaks like no other. Now Sleeping Beauty's wearing Huggy so new, and her dreams have all come true. Huggy's happily ever after.
It's everywhere. So don't scatter it with a dry cloth. Turn your dust cloth into a dust magnet. With end dust. <laughs> dust works like a dust magnet everywhere when it comes to bagging garbage there's a best way and a second best way a best way to close a best way to lift a best way to carry away why settle for second best i might be pregnant in three minutes i'll know with this clear blue easy it's the easiest pregnancy test ever just one step and no messy test tubes Clear blue easy.